Hello and welcome to topic 3, 1 through 3, 4. A little bit of content here. Measures of center and spread. How is What's the typical value and what's the variability? That's kind of what we're talking about today. So when I say measures of center, what I mean by that is describes with data is along the number line. It's the typical. It's, it's what is typical. So we all have an IQ, right? Some of us have high IQ, some of us not so much. What is the typical IQ? It'd be a hundred. Everyone kind of everyone kind of accumulates around a hundred. There's some people that are at 150. There's some people that are at 50, but most people are around 100. So 100 is the typical value of, say, IQ. The sample mean, there's a sample mean and there's a population mean, and they have different ways of writing it. So if you're dealing with the sample of something, the sample mean is the arithmetic average of values in a data set. We use this symbol for sample mean. That's x. We call that x bar. It's the sample mean. Um, whereas the population mean, we use the Greek letter mu, m u. All right, they're they're the same thing. Just x bar represents sample, mu represents population. So that will come into to play later on in the year. Um, so let's say you have some variable, call it variable x, could be IQ or something like that. And as the sample, there's 50 people in a classroom and you want to know their, their IQ. So this is the first person's IQ, the second person's IQ, and so forth, until you get to the 50th person's IQ, the individual observations. Here's the formula. Looks like this. It's the sum of all observations divided by the number of observations. You can find this in your formula packet. It might look just slightly different, but it's in there. Here's your formula packet. It's right there. This is the sum of all of the values. It would be the sum of all the IQs divided by the number of IQs. We're still talking about IQs. But there it is. It's in your formula packet. It's the first, first formula in there. The population mean, mu, is an arithmetic average of an entire population. And again, that will come into play because we will use samples to represent a population. So we're going to have difference in we have sample mean versus population mean. All right, the next thing is called the median. And the median is simply the middle, the middle value of the asset. Um, you first order everything in your set from smallest to largest. Repeated values are included. Every sample appears in the ordered list. If n is odd, then the median is the middle value. So if I was said, what's the median value there? It's the middle value. 3 is the median. If I said, what's the middle value here? There is no middle value. So if n is even, since there's 4, the median is the average of the middle 2. So the median here would be 2.5. OK, for 40 students, we have enrolled in a college. Here we go, the data set below for 40 students. And it's the number of times each of the 40 students had access, access a class web page. Look at these turds right here during the first month and then there's this person who is way out here they're a little obsessive but anyway there it is you can see the data distribution here and it appears that it is skewed in the positive direction so if the question is what is the sample median what we do is we have we have 40 students, so you got to find the middle. So we're going to split the data: 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 
Now that's the first 20, and that's the second 20. So because there's an even number, we average the middle two values. So therefore, we're going to do the average of 13 and 13, which would be 13. So that's the typical value here, the median. The, 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 what is the sample median? 13. What is the sample mean? So add all these up, add them all up, and divide by 40. And I'm just going to tell you what that is. Feel free to pause the video and do that for yourself. But you get that. Oh, I'm out of, I'm out of the picture. You get that. That's the sample mean, sample median, sample mean. Which one is a better representation of the typical value in this? Is the average the better representation of typical, or is the median the better representation of typical? Why is the sample mean so much larger than the sample median? Because of this guy. This, this data has a positive skew to it, which means that these, this guy and this guy, they are pulling the typical value in the positive direction. So 13 would be a better typical value. 13 is, is here. This is 13 right here. You can see that right there, right around there. And these numbers are pulling the average in the positive direction. So the average got pulled to 23 because this was so high. That's why it's called a positive skew. It's pulling the average, it's pulling the center in the positive direction. So why does the sample mean so much larger than the sample median because of this? Because it's a positive skew. So because it's a positive skew. Uh, important notes on this page so far. We learn from here that the sample mean can be sensitive to a single outlier. So if you've got outliers, which we're going to define finally today, if you've got an outlier, the mean is not a good way to represent the typical value. You want to use the median. The median is quite the median is quite insensitive to outliers, like you can see here. It worked. If the shape of the data distribution is approximately symmetric, you can use the mean. Okay, so if there's not skewed, go ahead and use the mean for the typical value. If the shape of the distribution is skewed, use the median. So symmetric, mean. Skewed, median. Next page. Let's talk about spread or variability. Spread. How much variability there is in a data distribution. Right now, variability is vague. Like here, you can see that this data set varies more from the typical value than, say, this data set. These are their cluster together. So a measure of spread provides information about how the individual vary, values vary from the mean. First way to discuss variability is by looking at the range. And it's not, it's not range as in like the range in temperature today is 72 to 80 degrees. That's not the type of range we're talking about. We define range as the largest minus the smallest. Okay, so the simple numerical value, largest minus smallest. So if, I, if the temperature ranged from 72 to 80, the range would be 8, because 80 minus 72 is 8. Deviations, the most widely used measure of um, variability. And they're based on how far each observation deviates from the typical value. So like th this data point here, here's typical, this data point here has a larger deviation than say this value here. This is a small deviation, this is a large deviation. How far it differs from the typical value here. 
Deviation is found by using this. You take the value of your x minus the average, the mean. Consider three sets. We got three sets here. So let's answer some questions. Each data set is a mean of 75. 75 is the typical value in each of them. Does that completely describe the data sets? If I gave a test and I said the average is 75, it tells you some information about the test, but it doesn't tell you most of the information. It doesn't tell you a lot of information. What would be good is to have the mean and the standard deviation so we can say how people were varying from the mean. So, um, does that completely describe that? No, because these all have different variability. So when we're describing data, we need to not only tell about the center, but we also need to tell about the variability. And then we get the real picture. What is the range of the data set for one? The range is anything from 100 to 50. So that's largest minus smallest. That's the range in the AP statistics sense of the word. The range is 50. What are each of the deviations from the mean? Okay, so in this scenario, again, the average is 75. So how does each of these deviate from 75 you take? So for 50, we're going to do 50 minus 75. So for 50, the deviation is negative 25. For 70, the deviation is negative 5. For 80, the deviation is 5. It's 80 minus 75. Uh, 60 minus 75, which would be negative 15. 90 minus 75, which is 15. And 100 minus 75 is 25. All right, now here we see something interesting. The deviations should always cancel out the zero. So like you have a, those cancel out, those cancel out, those cancel out. Because you got some that are be lower than the average value and you have some that will be higher than the average value but in general they're going to cancel out. How does, the, how does the negative deviation tell you about how the values compare? Well, the negative deviations were if, were if the values were less than the typical value. So for 50, 70, and 60, they were negative because they're less than 75. Um, so for D, right, that the negative implies the data was below the mean. You can write that. What is the sum of all the deviations? So if I sum them all up, if I add all these together, it's going to sum to zero. What is the average deviation from the mean? Average, that means if I sum these up and divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you still get 0. But that's a good thing to know is the typical deviation. We call that the standard deviation. We would like to know the typical deviation. We want to know the typical value and we want to know the, the typical deviation. How can we find the typical or average deviation from the mean then? How can you account for the negative values canceling out the positive values? Here's what we can do. Instead of looking at the values themselves, we can square them. We can square the deviations to get rid of the negatives. So once we square it, now square the deviations from this data set. Okay, so now we're going to square these. You get 625, 25, 25, 225, 225, and 625. So now we got all positive numbers here when we squared these values. Now find the average of these. And the average of these, however, we're going to use n minus 1 rather than n. And this is, uh, this is a statistical theory here that we can't get into. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to average these out, but instead of dividing by 6, we're going to divide by 5, 6 minus 1. This is called the variance of the data. So now take those and add them up and divide by uh, 5, and you're going to end up with 350. That's called the variance. Now, 350 says a little bit about the variability, but we're, we want to compare values around this typical value, 75. So 350 is, is, is an end, a means to an end. So what we need to do, since we, since we squared these, our final step is going to be to take the square root of this to get, kind of get back to these sorts of numbers. These are pretty big. So we're going to take the square root. Now take the square root of the variance. This is called the standard deviation. So the square root of 350 is 18.708, roughly 19, we'll say. All right, so in data set one, here's the deal. The average is 75, and the average variability is 19. You're, the, typically, you will vary by around 19. This is a little less than 19. This is right around 19, and this is a little more than 19. Here's your variability. If we were to average these out, kind of, you kind of average about to, to 19 is what we're getting at. So here's the variance. This is called the variance. And it's that process we go through. You, you take your deviations, you square it, you add them all up, you divide by n minus 1. Again, that's statistical theory. This, in the long run, this works out better than just n, and we're not going to talk too much about that. Um, there's things like that in statistics. Um, we would have to have like a grad degree to understand why n minus 1 instead of n. So we're just going to accept it for now. But to find the variance, you take your data, you find the deviations, you square the deviations, you add the deviations up, and divide by n minus 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we divide by 5. That's called the variance. The variance tells you a little bit, but the standard deviation is where it's at. It's just the square root of all of that. It's the square root of your variance. The standard deviation, that's in your form with packet? That would be right there. There's your formula packet. It's in the AP formula packet. So you don't have to memorize this formula. Standard deviation is more of a natural uh, measure of variability than the variance because is it, it is expressed in the same units as the original data values. So 19 makes a lot more sense when I talk about the, the, variabil the variability of these values versus 350. Like the mean, the sample standard deviation can be greatly affected by an outlier. If you put one outlier that has a lot of variability from the, the typical value, that's going to really affect your standard deviation. All right, that's video one.